Hi everyone and welcome to my channel. I'm Kim Crosby. Today's topic is depression. It's my next case study for this week and a lot of people suffer from depression. Maybe some of you are watching or suffering right now. I know I did 15 years ago and this what started my whole journey on trying to find the deeper roots to my depression. I had great therapists throughout my life, but I couldn't get to the deep roots and pull them out because I keep coming back. I kept coming back to anxiety. I kept coming back to depression and I really wanted it to get rid of it. So this is when I started on my quest to understand how our thinking affects our body and our behaviors and our life. So I'm going to show you how I work. When someone comes to my office, I would start right with an hour interview. I really start asking the person their question, listening to their story, and a lot through the story I'll start asking questions. How did this make you feel? Or what did this person say? And how did that make you feel? And then I get a global view of what the person is thinking and where the person is feeling. Now, I don't have all the information because that's why people come to see me. They're missing information about themselves. So I look for three things and I work with, no, sorry, four things. And I talked about this. I'll look at the head. I'll look at your emotions. I'll look at your body. And then we have the guide work. That's the inner heart work. That's your greater identity coming up and talking to you. Now, so when I start, because I have some, uh, the story of the client, I know where to start when I put them in a meditation state. That's where I put them in a state where they can go deeper into themselves. And then the inner self, the greater identity, will come up with a memory and will bring up what the person needs to acknowledge right now. Now, in the beginning, I always try to ask a memory. Go back to that moment where you felt this sad. Because depression, we know we feel sadness. But there's other emotions behind there that we have to find. Because the core belief, even when you're depressed, you have three main emotions. And this is what we need to find. Because we know we have sadness. And we know that when you feel a particular trigger uh, sentence, your core belief, it's going to trigger sadness. But there are others there behind or hidden that some of you may know or may not know. And that's why I try to find. Once I find these emotions, and you're, you're finding them yourselves, I find where are they located in your body. We underestimate this. We always work with our heads. We try to change our thoughts. But also what we've experienced is also imprinted in the body. The body also needs to release. It has another type of language. So that is also important. And that's why I work with yoga release or yoga emotional release. That when we try to trigger your body so that you can find these emotions that are stuck in the body. Either you cry, you scream, you whatever may happen, you shake, you're trying to release this from your body, these emotions, because you store them there too. That's why we get sick. You know, if you, you can, if you don't change here, nothing will change there. But if you start changing your head, at some point you've got to address the body because this is a whole, people. It's not different. It's just different languages. And then I always ask in the end, once I find all the patterns, which I'll show you in a minute, I ask advice from the guides on how to heal. I don't say anything. It's all the person that searches. You're a treasure trove of information, people. So I'm just going to help you see how I start. So the person goes in, they tell me they sad, and I say, well, give me a memory. So I'll go to a memory where a child may say, or a person, or it doesn't matter who it is, because I work with young adults and children, every, you know, older adults. <laughs> so anyway, I go to, and you say, the person will say, I finally, I feel like I'm empty, or I'm weak, or I'm powerless. So if the person says, I'm completely powerless, then I'll say, well, describe to me this powerlessness, like through an image. Give me an image of how it would represent this powerlessness. And I'll give you one. I had a client who says, I feel so powerless. I'm locked in a very small room. It's made out of stone. There's no door. And there's a very fine, small window at the top, but I can't see outside. I see a little bit of light, but not much. And I'm sitting in the corner of the room. And I'm sitting with my knees up and my head down. You see? This is a description of how your core beliefs image affecting you in the symbolic way. So if you guys found your core belief, maybe not everything yet, that doesn't matter, you can give you, I feel so, let's say, helpless that it feels like I'm, and then give me a description. How did that helplessness look in an image? It gives, you me, it gives you and me, as I'm working, more information about specifically how do you feel deeply inside. So if this person feels stuck in this room, can't get out, then that's why the depression is there. It's giving you an image. 
So once this image comes out, okay, so what do you, what do you feel? Oh, I feel really sad, but what else do you feel in this space? They'll say, I feel completely, I don't know, guilty. And I say, well, that's another one that can, or shameful. And then I'll go, okay, why do you feel shameful? And then we'll go back to the head, get some memories, get some situations, get new sentences around the shame. It'll always be the same core belief. That's what I'm looking for. Repeat, repeat. If I find a different sentence, I keep going until I have the same sentence that comes over again and again and again. So that's why I do multiple sessions. So once I have all the emotions, the problem I've noticed with people who are depressed is they don't get angry. They're passive. They never speak up. They never give their boundaries. They never tell their opinion. They never feel their emotions. So anger is where you want if you're depressed, you want to get angry. You want to get angry about your situation. Even if it's not rational, that's part of the problem, is that your anger is so deep down, it's not coming up. And for sure you're angry. You must be angry about certain things about their situation. You must be angry that you're stuck in this little room, in this little window. There's all these other thoughts that are there, but they're so hidden behind, so far repressed, that all you feel is this. Now, when I'm looking again for these different feelings that you're coming up with through your body, I try to locate where those three main emotions are pinpointed. Now, if you don't have anger, I'm going to try and find it at some point, or I'm going to ask your guide, how do, why is this person not angry? Why are we not getting out of depression? So I look to where it's located, and that's important because you want to release this, because if you don't release it, it causes sickness. Now, once I have this I know where they're located in the body, the emotions. I have my three emotions. I have my core belief with many other sentences around it. If I'm powerless, I can feel like a failure. If I'm powerless, I can feel like I, I, can, I never have good results. I can't make money. All these other sentences that come around. And then at the end, I go to the heart. Now, to go to the heart in the meditative state, I use the imagination, okay? I, I help the people to create a space, a comfortable, safe space in their mind. Sometimes it's a garden, sometimes it's the beach. A lot of the time it's in their own home, living room, bedroom, wherever they want, where they can feel themselves relaxed. It's this environment that is familiar. And then when they're sitting in this safe space, I say, okay, now we're going to call in the guide. The guide's going to come through the door into your safe space, wherever it may be. And I give them a description of the guide. The guide is someone who uh, never says negative. It only talks positive and it's constructive advice. And you may feel a presence. It may come as a, a man or woman, an animal, a presence, a color. It could be all kinds of different things, okay? And the person feels them coming in. And then I'll ask guide, may we speak with you? And then the, the client will feel a yes or no. And then I ask why we can't have no. But usually when it says no, it's the head again who doesn't want to go. It's so terrified to feel the feelings and start having bigger, deeper uh, insights about themselves that the head wants to block. So if that happens, don't worry. Keep repeating until you get to the guide. And I know it's possible because I've seen people with the comments of people who are working with me. They always find the guide at some point. They get really surprised when it comes in. So when I go to the heart, I get advice. I get advice about the core belief. Is it true? Not true. Your core belief is never true, but they need to hear it from the guide. No, it's not true. So if someone felt lonely for most of their life and the guide says, I'm, you're never lonely. I've been here all the time. You just haven't heard me. That's a revelation for someone. There's, my guide is with me? Yes, all the time, speaking to you. You just don't know because your intuition is a whisper. It can be more. Intuition is meant to be louder, conversation-like. And this is what people discover when they do the sessions, that their inner dynamic can be very constructive. You can have proper conversations. The guide also gives you love. It makes you feel loved. And when you feel it from yourself, people cry when they're depressed. They feel their guide loving them. It's like, really, someone deeply loves me for me, for all my issues, all my thoughts, all my behaviors. Everything I've been going through in my life, you feel this love, this warmth. And when I ask them to describe this, I just feel an overwhelming acceptance, love. It doesn't matter. And that's a change in healing. If your greater identity can accept you, then you need to accept yourself too. We also get acknowledgement, you know, like, guy, this has been hard. And they tell their difficulties. And the guy said, yes, it's been a rough journey. And just that acknowledgement, like, Oh, you can release, like, okay, it's true, you, you understand me. You get this further, deeper understanding about your situation. Of course, you get lots of insights. 
how to change. A lot of the time, relax comes a lot. A lot of the times is speak up. Don't be afraid to tell your truth. That kind of insights comes in. How to deal with people. So I'll give you an example because that's the next one because it's loaded with symbolisms when you're with the guide. I have a, a client who is struggling with their mother and they're not having a good relationship. And I asked the guy, guy, can we have more information about this relationship? And then the guide said, well, it's very complicated. So I asked the guy, please explain more so the clients understand more why their mother is so uh, um, rigid or strict or non-loving and so on and so forth. So the client sees, gets an image and like reads. I don't know how to explain it better than that because that's why it's symbolism. It's so hard to describe. So they're like these reads where, and they show them two types of reads, how your brain's supposed to be fluid. All these reads can move around and you can flexibility and you can walk through. But then when he saw his mother's reads coming through, he couldn't move. It's like everything was stuck. He couldn't get in. So he understood that the mother's thinking was so rigid, was so closed on herself that it was very difficult to speak. So the guide said, focus on your healing and eventually things will change. So you get symbolisms to better understand certain elements in your life or people of what's going on deeper in them. Because we talked about this in other videos that you can extend, again, your uh, awareness. Your, you can project yourself somewhere else. And this you can do too, but when you get the answers, they're symbolisms. And the client understands them because I said, well, what does this mean? And then the client will tell me, oh, it means this and this and this because they're getting an inner feeling. This inner greater feeling that's caused by your greater identity from your heart gives you this. And this is what is healing people, okay? You get other types of perceptions as well that maybe you didn't understand the first time and that lets helps you let go of a particular uh, thinking process. So this particular person, when they saw that it wasn't because they were bad, they were having depressed feelings and thoughts because of this relationship and they felt unloved or not good enough and they felt worthless and I have to do more and I have to do everything she says. And it just goes on and on where they get so depressed because they're looking for acknowledgement there. It's not where you get it, people. It's in here. So when they see more and they understood about the mother, that it's not their fault, that the mother has their own issues with their own thinking, that it's so rigid, it's not your fault. That kind of perception whew, releases again. And then you feel, okay, I can work more on myself and not worry over there. It's not about me. Nothing is about you people. It's always down here. This is where you look. That is not your concern. And then you go to the deeper feelings. So if I don't know something or the client is struggling, the guide will know where to go and give you the information that you need to start the healing. So when this person sees that, it releases a little bit. And then we go to the next session, we go deep further to release a little bit more, to get more clarity on what's going on. So when I'm having a session, I'm jumping from head to your emotions, to your body, to your heart and back and forth, and I'm going like this, okay? Because if I can't get somewhere, it's your head blocking, always. If you can't get to the heart, it's your head fearing. It's normal, it just gets to get used to it. It's gotta be, feel confident that this is good for it, that it's good to heal this because it's holding on to survive and it's not surviving in depression is not a proper su survival. So don't be afraid that you're more complicated people. If I'm using all of this to find more about you, you can do it too. Baby steps, you start here, pinpoint some emotions, where is it in my body? Then eventually the heart, when you can get there in meditation, will give you all the information to help you heal. So guys, if you have more questions, please write them in the comment. I look forward to seeing you next week. Subscribe, you know, click on the bell so you know a video is coming every week, and I look forward to seeing you. You guys keep doing well.